Strokes and TIAs, transient ischemic attacks, are a fairly common call for us in EMS. The CDC estimates there's about 795,000 strokes a year, um, so just under 800,000, and about one in four of those strokes occur in somebody that had had a stroke previously. The majority of them, 87%, are ischemic strokes, and the remaining 13% are hemorrhagic strokes. So let's talk about the difference between the two. Seeing a patient with a stroke is going to be a common occurrence for you as an EMT, so I wanted to talk about the different types of strokes. I will have another video on the signs and symptoms, uh, along with assessment of a stroke patient and how to treat the stroke patient. There's really two basic types of stroke. The ischemic stroke is about 85 to 87% of strokes according to the CDC. And this is when there is a blockage in one of the arteries going to the brain, and then everything downstream from that is not getting blood flow, oxygen, and glucose along with other nutrients. This is similar to a heart attack. So sometimes we call these ischemic strokes brain attacks. And oftentimes these ischemic strokes are due, due to plaque buildup and then a clot or a thrombus forming in that area. Now, there are two zones that occur in a stroke area. We have the ischemic penumbra, and this is the area, in this case, with the light gray around the dark gray area. And these parts, or these cells in the brain, this part of the brain, um, is not dead yet, uh, but if we don't treat it, we'll die. So this is the area that we're trying to save. And then we have the zone of infarct, which is kind of in the middle of this diagram, and that's where the cells have died, and when brain cells die, there's nothing we can do to recover those. So we're trying to provide good stroke treatment to limit the size by restoring blood flow to that ischemic penumbra. Many times an ischemic stroke is due to a condition called atrial fibrillation. And we've probably heard of ventricular fibrillation, where the ventricles are quivering, and this is common in cardiac arrest, and atrial fibrillation, the atria are uh, fibrillating, so they're just quivering. And what happens with the atria when they quiver is the blood kind of stagnates in there or pools in there, and any time you have blood that stagnates, then you have clots that form. This clot then travels down into one of the ventricles. If it travels into the right ventricle, it goes into the lungs to cause a pulmonary embolism. If it travels into the left ventricle, it may come out and go into one of the coronary arteries and cause a myocardial infarction, or it may go up uh, to, to one of the carotid arteries and up into the brain and cause a ischemic stroke. Patients with atrial fibrillation may or may not feel any signs or symptoms with it, so they may not even know that they have it, but when you check their pulse, oftentimes it's going to be very irregularly irregular. And an ECG, it's pretty easy, easy to spot. Hemorrhagic strokes is when one of the blood vessels ruptures, and this could be a blood vessel inside the brain or in the subarachnoid space around the brain. And these make up a much smaller portion of, of strokes. A lot of these are due to hypertension, so they've had high blood pressure that was untreated, and eventually one of these blood vessels ruptures. Um, oftentimes these patients will say they've had the worst headache of their life, um, and they may have an intolerance to light along with some nausea, vomiting, and actually look very much like what a head injury would look like. Another cause of hemorrhagic strokes is this arteriovenous malformation, where you have a group of blood vessels in the brain that instead of the artery going through arterioles down to capillaries and then venules and back to vein, as I tried to show in the middle of this diagram, the um, artery or arteriole goes straight into a vein and there's no real branches with capillaries. And this area, for whatever reason, seems to be kind of a weak area and can rupture. And this occurs in about 1% of the population, according to the CDC, and uh, is another cause of, of strokes. Um, sometimes this is a congenital thing that people are born with, and this is one of the leading causes of younger people having strokes as they were born with this and it ruptures. Now something that is very much related to this is a transient ischemic attack. And this is your patient that has all the signs and symptoms of a stroke, 
but the signs and symptoms resolve within 24 hours. So basically, they looks like they have a stroke, but then they go away. Some people call these mini strokes. Um, oftentimes, these are due to um, plaque buildup, uh, sometimes in the carotid artery, and for whatever reason, they had some vasospasm and cut off the blood flow to part of their brain, and they had the signs and symptoms of a stroke, but it went away very quickly. Um, so with these mini strokes, it's not that they're having a stroke, but it's an indication that there's something wrong, and they may have a stroke in the future, and it needs to be investigated. So remember, we have ischemic strokes, where we have blood vessels blocked. We have hemorrhagic strokes, where we have a blood vessel that ruptures and bleeds. And then the TIA, or transient ischemic attack, is when they have all the signs and symptoms of a stroke, but it disappears within 24 hours. So I hope this helps uh, you try to figure out or learn a little bit about the two types of strokes. And I will have another video on the signs and symptoms and treatment of stroke patients for the EMT.